Hola, darlings. It's Moby outside. Welcome to the pregame. And this is a very special series. So in March, it's Women's History Month, and I'm working really closely with the creative director at MQ Factory. Shout out to Julian Mears to give women their flowers. So do you see this beautiful set? Do you see this beautiful business owner beside me, corporate oh. creative? Not her looking away Thank like you. she you know I'm talking about Thank her. You. Yeah, so this <laughs> is literally what this series is about. So this is going to be one of many. Well, I'll add the numbers later, okay? Um, <laughs> where we're in, taking the time to interview women-owned business specific to the Philadelphia area. How you doing, boo? I'm doing great. Oh, my darling. I'm good. So tell the people, who am I talking to? Definitely. My name is Barb Dash. I am the founder of The Corporate Creative. Wh what else you want me to give them? Just my name for oh, now? All the things. All, all the, the things. things. All the things. So where can they find you? Okay. You can find me on Instagram at thecorporatecreative.us. You can find me on LinkedIn, Facebook, everything. It's thecorporatecreative.us. Um, my business, The Corporate Creative, is for people who are balancing a professional career and a creative career or who want to leverage a short work week to do the full-time transition from corporate to creative. This is the Lord's work. Keep going. Is okay. it the Lord's work? What? Okay. And then on the, that's the B2C side. Okay. Now B2B, B2 B, that means business business to business. Um, B2B, it's a retention program. So I go to companies, I say, hey, you got some corporate creatives working for you, and I know how you can keep them. So let me go ahead and s pivot them to a short work week and keep them engaged. Okay, wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, because I think that if you've seen other episodes of the pregame, if you haven't, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that bell, so you don't miss another episode of the pregame. Okay, so if you've been watching the pregame, you know that I talk about Philadelphia as hustlers. Oh, absolutely. We are hustlers. Easily. Yeah. Now, Definitely. you say easily. Go ahead. Philly has such a, a hustle spirit, a grind spirit. Yes. Um, everybody's hand is in everything. And it's admirable also a little all over the place, right? I'm, I'm, I'm always shocked how many people I find are doing so many things, but they're really talented at it. They stick with it. And, I mean, if we just need to be put on the map. I agree. Mm -hmm. And I think a part of that, and you and I have had some conversations prior mm -hmm. to today. Yeah about what that looks like, yeah. right? Because there's this work-life balance that I think a lot of people talk about. Yeah, I believe in work-life harmony. Love it. Right? So, like, Love if it. my life is in a mess, so is my so is my business, so Absolutely. is my 9 to 5. Mm -hmm. And my 5 to 9, mm -hmm. right? Everything's a mess. Yeah. Or if my 5 to 9 is doing great, then I need to flex a little bit. There's that sure. sort of that flex. So how do you have that type of conversation with uh, businesses? Uh, definitely. Um, I think, really, it starts from... It starts at a place of strength, right? So when you're having the conversations, you want to make sure that you have all your T's crossed and your I's dotted, right? Um, but the conversation is really saying, do you find me an asset? Do you find me valuable? And if you do, this is what I'm going to need for uh, to, to, to feel sustained and to feel fulfilled and to really engage at work. Um, I think a lot of employees are not aware, no, not employees, employers are not aware that they're losing more money by retaining talent who's not engaged and who's not working than they are if they just invest in employees they have. So I'm pitching to companies saying, hey, you know, you're investing in your fitness employees because you give them fitness discounts and gym memberships all the time. Yeah, Same yeah. thing for parents, paid maternity leave, maternity leave. Um, there's no reason you can't give corporate creatives who are working on this creative thing more time and money and resources to do that thing on your dime, just like you're paying for everybody else's stuff. Okay, so if I'm that business and I say, okay, okay. So what happens when they blow up? What happens when the person blows up? What happens when they blow up and now I don't spend all this money Ooh. and they left? They that's left. They ooh, out. That's a tough one. This Moby outside and blew up. She turned into Oprah real quick. And now. Yeah, no, for sure. I have thought about it in the future. It's not something I've had to encounter now. But I will say um, if the company invests well enough in their employees, there could be the equi an equity conversation. Right. Um, but. Oof, I don't know. You make me think about it a lot sooner. I'm just when I'm so the thing <laughs> that I think about often, right? Because I do not shy away from Moby outside being my passion project. So I have a nine to five and I have a five to that's fire though, because most whenever. people don't say that yeah. they got something going on. Oh, absolutely not. I am absolutely I am waiting for my boss to just <laughs> start our one one on one with an Ola darling. And like I might I'm gonna be the color of this table, y'all. I'm gonna just I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, clean that out. That would be dope. <laughs> that would be dope. And for you to laugh, it would be funny on the podcast. <laughs> You'd be like, oh, so th is this what you've been doing with your free time? Um, but anyway, I digress. Mm. Um, it makes me think about sort of that level of fear. So if we're talking about mm. the creatives that you're working with, like, Definitely. are you having a fear conversation? Because oh. I am... I listen the sec the first and second time I went viral on TikTok I was like my boss is gonna find this oh. he gonna find it and like because you know the algorithm works in mysterious ways wow it so, does yeah so like what is that type of conversation as a cr any of the creatives that are watching yeah this? no fear is definitely the biggest barrier um I've thought through what some of them are and having conversations people usually jump from time money 
uh, fear, knowledge, whatever network maybe. Uh, oh, yeah, but fear is definitely. easily the biggest one. I think for corporate creatives specifically, and, and generally in creatives, I think there's always this competition aspect that there's not enough space for every creative. Mm -hmm. And so we're all trying to beat somebody else at their game. And I'm like, play your own game. That part. Be great at what you do. And, and the other thing part. I tell corporate creatives, and this ain't no shade to creatives, because I, I haven't even figured out how to say this the nice way, right? But It's uh, all right. You can tell us in the comments. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> A lot of times people who work with full-time artists or creatives, they're, they're apprehensive to working with them because they don't always meet deadlines, their professionalism, communication, and so you get mm -hmm. a little nervous around that. I tell people, when you're a corporate creative, you have this professional background, let it work for you. The reason people yes. come back to work for me is because they're shocked by how, how much I communicate in advance, mm -hmm. me sticking to deadlines, transparency, deliverables, whatever the case, right? And so. Yes. Let that be your differentiator. Act like a corporate creative. Like use your background as the thing that's going to get you through it. Um, but the fear thing is really it's, it's a mental barrier that everybody comes through or has to go through. And I think, um, I mean, the it's a tough one because you can only walk through people through it so much, right? Mm -hmm. So at some point they have to get there themselves. But um, I think it's just like a, a constant. She said, "I'm gonna lead you to water, y'all. <laughs> Catch it." She said, "I'm gonna lead you to water." You can only do so much. I mean, I've had conversations with people how to negotiate with their bosses. They never go do it. They don't send the email. They don't say it. They don't read the book. They don't do any of it. I'm like, I all right, well, I, I listen. I get it. It's hard. I'm. I promise you. I'm gonna call you. I'm gonna text you. Okay. He opened my one-on-one -on -one with Ola Dala, and I'm gonna lose it. Okay. <laughs> Can't wait for that time. I can. I can. I'm sure it'll I be can a good wait. Story behind it. I can wait. Listen, I better be ready to launch. I better already be consulting. Oh, okay. People are ready already, for you. I, I would have already. I should already been in the, the pipeline. The market's ready for you. You good? <laughs> we'll see. Preferably. All right. So, we're talking about sort of the corporate, sort of going mm -hmm. to the creative. What it? The, some of the creatives watching this, and they go, "My corporate job kills my soul." Ooh, what do I say to them? What do you say to them? Because they're tr also trying to transition. Yeah. Right? I think the first step is deciding whether um, the place that you're currently working at is worth staying while you map out this plan. Mm. Everything in corporate takes longer than we plan for it to, whether that's moving from one team to another, yes. whether it's your salary, whether it's your promotion, everything takes longer than, than you want it to, right? So the first question is asking yourself, can I be here in this space for six months to a year? That it, at the very minimum, it's going to take me to, mm -hmm. to start that transition. Um, if not, pivot to another job before you even look at full-time creative because I did it the wrong way. I quit my job. I, listen, I Hold was Hold on, wonderful. wait, wait, wait. Go ahead, origin story. <laughs> Let's right, go. Listen. Let's go. Uh, 20, the end of 2022, I was working mm -hmm. um, two years into my contract, and I was getting paid well, and hours were set. I was working three days a week. So um, by everybody else's means, standards, I was living the life, right? But I couldn't do it. I was waking up and I just was like. Y'all, I need the soundboard to work. I want to be I like, oh. <laughs> Ouch. No, that's really what it was. No. I was waking up like, God, is this real? I need that I'm Kevin like, Hart. Like, no. It was rough. It was rough. <laughs> so after that, um, I was like, you know what? I'm going to go out on my own. I'm going to do it. They say leap full time. I-M-D-E. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do it. Girl, I quit. <laughs> <laughs> laugh at myself sometimes <laughs> Miss, okay so you don't let this three dream. day a week <laughs> with a hope and a dream okay a hope and a dream okay and I wasn't clear about what my creative business was yet or what I was offering yet okay. and before anybody leaves corporate you need to understand what you're selling and I have at least one customer buying that thing just one mm -hmm. if you're not confident selling something you're not confident of the value it brings you can't sell anything. You're nervous. You feel bad asking for people right. X, Y, Z. And so mm -hmm, mm -hmm, anybody mm -hmm. trying to transition, figure out what you're selling, first of all, and have a customer before you actually get out of court. Yeah, she's going to give us this plan. She already told us two gyms. Yes. This is the third one. This one, have a plan. Okay. Two, have it be time bound. She was dropping those gyms earlier, six mm -hmm. months to a year. Sort of figure that out. Three, have a client. All right, have go ahead. A have, a have, a, have a client. Have a client. They can pay more than the Pico bill. All right, go ahead. I'm weak. So, um... I think after they have that mapped out of being very clear about who they're serving and what they're selling, um, then the next step is hitting the boss, whether it's your current one or you just went to a new firm. Hey, listen, uh, this is what's, what's important to me. This is what would work for me. Um, the easiest bite to getting a four-day work week introduced or a three-day work week is just saying, hey, can we try it out for 
two to three months during mm-hmm. this stint and agree in advance what success is going to look like for both of you, mm-hmm. meaning you still meet all of your deadlines, meaning you're still carrying your weekly deliverables, meaning you are still engaging with partners or whoever it is, but have that manager feel very involved in what those metrics are so that when we get to the end of it, there isn't a feelings-based, did this work for us or not? Because as long as you've hit those things, he can't say anything, and you gave him or her the chance to input at the, at the beginning. Yeah, shout out to her because it is Women's History Month. Absolutely, All right, absolutely. So, um, now where are you in this process? I went back to work, girl. I went back to work. So this is where I'm at. Um, with individual corporate creatives, right now I'm just building community, getting visibility, right? But I'm Also, please follow her. All of her details are in the show notes. Go ahead. Follow me, follow me. But follow um, with corporate creatives gaining visibility and community, right, I've found that it's really difficult to make the same impact um, on an individual basis, right, just because of that fear thing happening where you have conversations with people and they're really nervous and they don't want to take that step. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I've pivoted my attention to the B2B side where I'm approaching all the companies in Philadelphia to say, hey, you know, there's a segment of your employees that are corporate creatives. Let me take care of them for the seasonal four-day work week. And my hope and and what we're expecting to see there's already research supporting increased productivity engagement work-life balance and harmony um for a short work week but there's even that much more evidence of uh people who are serious intellectuals uh typically have a serious hobby as well so when i think of bars yeah when i think of corp creators i'm not thinking of someone who like enjoys a good sip and paint which is totally fine or who enjoys a good sculpting class one one Mm -hmm. every few months right we're talking about the people that they leave and every day they're working on the same thing and they've been doing it for years and they're mm-hmm. really serious about it, right? Their productivity is going to go up, their engagement is going to go up and you want to keep those type of people at your job because they're not easily replaced. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So have you encountered a person per- personally or professionally that is sort of motivatorial, right? So they're such a creative. So mm-hmm. they have their nine to five mm-hmm. that does all the things mm-hmm. that nine to fives are supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Shout out to the nine to fives. All right. But we also have the five to nines or the five to nine AMs Mm-hmm. Right, mm-hmm. and so for two years, mm-hmm. they were a graphic designer, mm-hmm. and then two years after that, they were a fashion designer, mm-hmm. and now they're doing event coordination. Mm-hmm. Like, what do you say to that person? The person who has I already made the transition? No, who's still nine to five, but mm-hmm. they don't have one passion that they've been working on for years. They have multiple. Gotcha. And I do this, and I do this. Gotcha. And I'm a, and I'm a project manager, and I'm an event mm-hmm. coordinator, and I'm a florist. Yeah. And I what get do you that. Say to that That's something I struggle with because I, I jump into everything, any and everything, all the time. Um, what I'm finding as a business owner, though, is you need to specialize in one thing before you start branching out on all these things. Okay. So I know it's tough, but. I would reduce the things that you are just remotely interested in and, mm-hmm. and be passionate about, and I would pick up the one thing that you think you want to be known for that you can become. I'm reading this book called um, Play Bigger, where it's saying beca- beca- um, become a category king, where essentially Ooh, like you establish your own category of business mm-hmm. um, and become the person they go to for that instead of trying to fit into an existing business stream. So to that I say pick one, stick with it, and you can diversify later once you've solidified your clients and you're standing in the market for that. Awesome. And guys, if you haven't seen the Kai Created It um, interview, I'm going to link it below. Please, please, please lock into him. He is a um, local content, sorry, excuse me, brand marketer, content Mm -hmm. creator. And he talks about having the three pillars Mm -hmm. of your content. And sort of that sort of specific. I mean, I'm just letting you know. Shout out to Kai. Come on, pass it on. (laughs) Pass the knowledge. Pass the knowledge. (laughs) (laughs) Listen, I'm I'm here, Mm -hmm. not only just with MQ Studios, but just in general, I think that if I can shine a little bit of light, hold a little mirror up to, to the city, then Absolutely. we can all learn together. We can all we sort of figure to. this out. Yes. Have to. 100%. Like, no, no lie. Almost a year to the date. Um, this one held networking events. We're going to talk about that in a minute. <laughs> um, and we were going back and forth. I was like, I am dying. I'm so sorry. And she goes, I get it. It's fine. All good. So um, speaking of networking events, yeah, definitely. <coughs> do we have any of those coming up for you? Um, I think the next one we're going to have is in a couple of months. Okay, so great. Gonna, we're going to have to pivot back to that. But definitely, I'm um, always trying to create space for professionals to network um, and engage and, and find collaborative projects to work on. And so what we're going to do is we're going to act like we're all here. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to take a little snippet of this, what we're about to say mm-hmm. for that marketing for when it comes up. So, so tell okay. it to me about your networking event. Definitely. So um, I have an event with the P4 Hub and the BBEX Network in Germantown. And, yes. Um, and it is Love just a really space. dope space, absolutely, for bra- black and brown excellence professionals. Mm-hmm. Um, really great place to connect and to find people who are like-minded with you. I'm always really excited to get there. You can have some food, wine. Everybody you need to know is in that room. 
all the things. All right. And so you already know I'm going to be outside. So I'm going to tell you when it's coming up. So just stay locked in and you're going to follow. So you won't miss it. Okay. Okay. All right. So you've literally dropped five gems. Have I? Yes, you have. I'm glad you've been counting. Listen, um, because that (laughs) nine to five, all those transferable skills. Okay. That was the first one. Skills. One, transferable (laughs) skills. All right. Two, make a plan. Make a plan. Plans aren't dreams. Right. So that a plan has to be time bound. It has to be written. Absolutely. All right. So then the third thing you told us is to be very, very specific about what we're doing. Absolutely. Got to be specific. You got to. The fourth thing you told me is to get paid on the thing that I'm being specific about. Get paid before get you paid take a leap. Absolutely. Before you take a leap. Uh huh. All right. And then we're gonna create. We're gonna tell to that plan about our to our boss. Oh yes. Absolutely. All right. So did That's I miss anything? One. Did I miss anything? I think you got it. You great at this. Listen, girl. I be I be Listen. paying attention. I be paying attention, y'all. I be paying attention. Listen. All right. So any of the businesses don't want to work to you, work with you, or they you hear this and they're may not be the necessarily the decision maker, but yeah. they like the idea of the thing. What's something, a gem that we can give them in terms of what that looks like in selling this to leadership as well as building that trust? Because we talked a lot about fear, that trust with their Definitely. employees. Definitely. I think uh, something <coughs> I typically challenge uh, individuals in <coughs> HR, diversity and inclusion to look at is um, we have this conversation about company culture all the time and authenticity. Right. But Ooh. what I typically challenge them to do is go look at all of their fringe benefits that they're offering and ask themselves how frequently do they check this? When's the last time they added something to it or took something took something away to make sure that it was reflective of what the employees are asking for. Yes. So that's number one. Number two, um, I would also say um, the next thing for them to do is to look at their employee resource groups. Nine times out of 10 people's employee resource groups are always demographic bound. Um, And a lot of them are things, some things they're born into, some things are elected, right? So um, none of them typically are skill based or interest based. So I encourage people to look at whether they are completely missing an opportunity to tap into the things that are driving people outside of work. Um, there's something called the spillover theory, which essentially says um, how you feel in one area of life will always carry over to the next area of life greatly, right? So if people harmony, feel harmony. harmony, if people feel that they don't have enough time and space to pursue what they're doing outside of work, the creativity, family, X, Y, Z, then they're coming in a work drained and, and it, it's, you know, bleeding over. Yes. Um, so having a holistic uh, approach to benefits and employee wellness and employee being um, well-being is, is going to be the first step for them. Okay, so Deb reads on this, y'all. She's well-read and well-versed. I can just hear it in our conversation. So I have to ask you about workplace authenticity. Oof. I have to ask you. Oof, oof. So because like this is what we're talking about, right? We're talking about showing up authentically to work as your whole self, as your creative self, as your corporate self. Yeah, for sure. And then talking about exposing. Uh-huh. Exposing Expose myself. Expose it. Uh-huh. Right. Absolutely. So like do you feel, and feel free to answer this question, both from a creative side and a corporate side. Yeah. Um, how does that play into not only your business, but how people show up at work. Yeah, uh, man, that was something I struggled with for the first few years. Um, Mm -hmm. I consider myself a perfect split of corporate and creative, right? Like Mm -hmm. I am all over the wall, all over the place creatively, right? And corporate, I fit the box, I talk the talk, Mm -hmm. I dress it, whatever You co-switch? Huh? You co-switch? Do I co-switch? Oh, how many black people don't? (laughs) Listen. Wait, did she just answer that like a politician? (laughs) Answer the question. (laughs) Answer the question. I mean, I'm very particular with my language in the right rooms. You know what I'm saying? But in any case, right, it's definitely something uh, I had to work through showing my authentic self to mm-hmm. corporate America. Um, but about two, three years ago, I said, F it, I'm going to just do it. And I walk in there being very explicit and very um, open about having a business that's co- catering to creatives. Every time we have an all hands meeting and they have a stand up and say, what's your purpose? I say to create space for creatives in corporate America. Like I'm very out about it um, because what I, I think that being a mon- minority, I think there are already so many uh, spaces to navigate culture wise and, and how, how we're received and, if I'm overthinking what I said in this manner that I don't want to self-impose one, you know, like I'm not going to limit myself in that way. Mm -hmm. So I I just give myself the chance to be free and whatever their response is, we'll deal with it then. But, uh, (laughs) you know, I haven't been tried yet. So, (laughs) and I don't expect to be, uh, (laughs) not tried. Hold on. Pause. Um, no, I, I agree with you totally. I think that 
oftentimes we forget about the emotional weight that it is to put on the suit mentally and physically. Absolutely. Right. Get geared up to be a portion of yourself. Yes. A portion. A portion. Yourself. Right. Oof. And so whatever portion that is depends on the day, mm -hmm. depends on what meeting set you're in. Mm -hmm. Am I going to the office? Mm -hmm. Is the camera on at home? Mm -hmm. All of that depends. Right. Mm -hmm. And so particularly as women, um, as I stand before you as a black woman mm -hmm. and I'm transitioning a hairstyle, for example, now I got to have conversations about did it, did you get your hair cut? Did you get your hair colored? Right. And then that's Absolutely, very that's man. very surface level, right? Mm -hmm. But if we're talking about the responsibilities that women hold at home in our community, things like that, being able to have those conversations with my boss, um, there's been a lot of think pieces about women who are supporting not only their parents, but anybody mm -hmm. that is incarcerated. Mm -hmm anybody with special needs, mm -hmm. anybody, you know, anything that is not the Brady Bunch. I'm weak. <laughs> no, and I mean, and family matters. Yeah, or, yeah. Right? Like, it's a very cut and clean, mm -hmm. this is why it's okay to be at work, and this is when it's not okay to be at work. Mm -hmm. And ha being able to have those types of vulnerable, really authentic conversations mm -hmm. is heavy. Yeah. And it's also very particular. Mm -hmm. And I recall, like it was yesterday, I got my first corporate job, couldn't mm -hmm. tell me nothing. It's March they can never tell you nothing the first time. Be what? Like <laughs> what? <laughs> got on, elevated to the 40-something floor, mm -hmm. was going. And the first black woman I encountered said, they don't know, need to know nothing about you. She told me, she said, with your young self, I see you, you super green. Mm -mm. Oh, man. They don't need to know. This woman's like that. Oof. You need to, they don't need to know who you are, why you leaving work, where you going on vacation, what you having for lunch. They don't need to know oh, nothing. Man. And then as I grew in my professionalism and in my uh, sort of, you know, my business sense, um, businesses are like babies. And this is a Monique statement. Businesses are like babies, mm -hmm. right? They are. They are. They're babies. They are. And you don't give your babies to anybody. Absolutely. So if we're wondering why we're not being promoted, why we're not having these conversations, why we're not sort of doing things, does your employer know you? Mm -hmm. And that would have to include your creative side. And at this point, I'm, pr I'm preaching to myself because I will absolutely have to figure out if I'm going to tell that man um, anything. But, you know, we'll see. I mean, I, I think I took little baby bites, you know, on the way over there. Maybe I, the first small bite, small step I took was, you know, they always ask you, what would you do over the weekend? And I used to do the, the corporate lingo. Oh, I caught up on some reading and spent some time in the house and just relaxed a little bit. She wants me to get fired, y'all. Go ahead. I'm like, more I'm lying. I'm like, oh, I just did this accent wall. Or actually, I just worked with a friend that do a session. Oh, you sing. Yeah, I do sing, right? And so... I took little small bites to see the response to that space of, like, mm -hmm. I'm a different person outside of work, and let's see what you're coming back with. And, you know, once I tested the water, felt comfortable. I'm like, okay, well, here you go. See, that's a part of my code switch, y'all. Um, I'm a w avid reader at work. At work. <laughs> at work specifically. Mind you, I do whole weekend recaps. Um, whole weekend recaps. <laughs> I put it out on the internet for free <laughs> to the entire world. Hoping oh. to go viral to tell people what I did over the weekend. And I am an avid reader. I love that. What book are you reading um, now? Listen. Um, <laughs> a lot of them. Are you a like, multi-book reader? I'm absolutely a multi-book reader because I, I have I to I have to marinate on the thing. I can't do it. I do. So I love for short essays. I love for a good mm. story. Okay. But, you know, that's literally, yep. Mm -hmm. Do you think you're a good storyteller because of it? I don't, much you read? I don't know that I'm a good storyteller. Okay. I'm very long-winded. Have you seen you? Um, <laughs> Why Did I Get Married or Who Did I Marry? With the fifty-two part series, like we probably no, cousins, <laughs> we probably cousins. Like <laughs> someone else just mentioned it to me. That's funny. Like first of all, I don't have five hundred hours to listen to her story, but uh, no, no, it's I'm ten like minutes. It's not actually oh, okay. It's ten minutes apart. It's fifty-two. It's fifty-two parts. Mm, the nation has tuned in. Wow. She has gotten paid over eighty thousand dollars based on um, her compensation on on the media's for telling her story. <sighs> Lots of think pieces. We are related, me and her. Not in real life, y'all. Not in real <laughs> life. But if long story made short, if I call you up as my girlfriend, yeah, and I'd fair. be like, yo, long story made short, just know we're going to be on the phone for 45 minutes. Okay. There's nothing There's nothing short about the story. We all need those things. Uh, listen, y'all hate us. We're great at brunch, though. <laughs> great at brunch. We're always late, but we're a good time. Always uh, late. Okay. Always late. Noted. No, no, no. Anybody that can't tell a short story is never on time. Fair enough. 
they on the phone with their mama talking about the color of her new curtains. Like, okay, no. Let me just type that one in the file. Um, if you disagree with me, holler at me in the comments. But I said what I said. Fair um, also, tag your friend who always tells you. Long story made short. Okay, yeah, so I got a few. Tag I'm gonna go back and tag. <laughs> tag <him. laughs> Mo said it, not me. Okay, so anyway, um, we've. We've gotten into a lot of deep pockets of conversation. One, particularly as we present ourselves as women in Women's History Month. Yeah. Shout out to Julian Mears and the team. MQ Factory is having an amazing, amazing, amazing marketplace. All female entrepreneurs, all female businesses. I need y'all to be there. I will be hosting. It's going to be a phenomenal event. If you cannot attend, I, I don't know what to tell you. Um, we're going to be tagging all of the businesses. I need you to, in Women's History Month, I need you to be a patron of a, of a woman's own business, particularly corporate creative. Come on. I mean, we got space over here. set up a consultation. Absolutely. Tell Deb Mo sent you, okay? And, like, let's begin strengthening that muscle of authenticity. Let's begin strengthening that muscle of what it is to dedicate time to a passion such that you have a plan behind it and it's not just a hobby. Yes? Absolutely. All right, Deb, where can they find you? You can find me at thecorporatecreative.us on Instagram, LinkedIn, The Corporate Creative, and Facebook, The Corporate Creative as well. Um, you can also check my personal profile, profile out at B underscore dashing. That's B underscore dashing. That's She's it. so sweet. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for inviting me. Y'all, as always, y'all know with the pregame, I'm sending you the energy that you need to have the week you desire. Have a great day.